Hey everybody, this is John Kinnear with CableTV.com. This week we've got Josh McDermott here to talk a little bit about The Walking Dead, him himself, his plan for the zombie apocalypse. Hey, thanks for stopping by, Josh. Thanks for having me, John. I didn't know we were talking about The Walking Dead. I know. What is this show? <laughs> well, we can talk about Mad Men, too, if you really want. Well, that show's over. That show's dead to me now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but it lives on, much like a zombie in The Walking Dead. Yeah, well, let's it, talk about. Uh, it hasn't been stabbed in the head yet. <laughs> we could do that. So let's talk about you just a little bit. Uh, you, so you kind of got your start in uh, comedy. I, I read that you did some call into a local radio show a little bit, uh, some unique voices, and then gone on with them. How was that? Uh, that was great. I mean, I started I started doing that when I was a child. Um, I would call into this radio show and I would do voices, but it wasn't even. I don't do voices. I'm not like Ross Marquand, one of my co-stars on The Walking Dead, where he does like impressions and, and like spot on. He even gets the, like down to the, the tiny nuances of, of uh, inflections and things like that, that that you know the certain celebrities that he impersonates uh, do. But for me, my my whole thing was I was really good at sticking to a character and just committing and never dropping the character. So you know, it may not have been funny, but it was believable at times. Um, and uh, I think that's kind of how I, I first fell in love with acting. Um, you know, that was kind of my uh, my own personal training. I didn't, like, go to acting school or anything like that. I just kind of figured it out uh, in the heat of the moment. Um, but, yeah, I started doing that and was working with a radio station. And while I was doing that, I, uh, I started doing stand-up comedy. And so I did comedy, you know, stand-up for 12 years. I was touring. I, you know, would go on the road with guys like, you know, Joe Rogan and I, I'd open for uh, I opened for Louis C.K. a bunch and and Dave Attell and stuff like that, and um, you know it was fun. But uh, you know I I knew I wanted to be acting the whole time, so I I, I started uh, you know that's when I started taking formal training. Sure. And then I uh, I kind of worked my way into the, the the comedy world of acting. Nice. Well, we we can definitely see the commitment to character, and I, I'd say you're selling yourself a little short on voices because uh, your Eugene character. It's funny. I I've read the comics before the show was on. And uh, so I, I was very familiar with Eugene, and I, I thought the casting for the show had been exemplary, and then they just knocked it out of the park when they brought you in. I think that you, your Eugene is, is spot on to how I imagined it being. And so I was, I, I was reading your Reddit AMA, and I, I noticed you said you based his voice off your brother Zach's voice. Yeah. My, my brother, um, again, another, you know, this must, this must just run in my family, but a guy who likes to commit to uh, a character... He, uh, he was working, I won't say where he was working, but he had a job and he had everybody convinced there that he was Russian. <laughs> um, there's no Russian in our family, but he, he's a hairy guy. He has like a full on beard and he would wear like this Russian Cossack hat and he would speak with a heavy Russian accent and uh, he had everybody believing that his name was like Dimitri or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but his regular voice is so, he has such little affect when he speaks he would be incredibly excited about something, and I would just say, you know, Zach, are you excited? And he'd say, yeah, yeah. Like, that's him <laughs> extremely excited. So I kind of took that element of him and brought it into Eugene, of just kind of this guy who speaks so flatly. And uh, it was funny because I started talking about how I was basing it on my brother, and people st that he worked with started to, like, figure it out that he wasn't really Russian. And so he called me. He's like, dude, stop telling people that because, like, you're ruining my thing. <laughs> well, don't worry. We're not going to put this on the internet, so nobody will see it. Oh, great. <laughs> Speaking of... <laughs> the internet is dying. What do we need that for? Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> it was, it's a fad. It's going away. So, how about... Like, which character besides Eugene on The Walking Dead do you, do you most identify with? Well, that's a good question, because the question I usually get is, which character would you want to play if, it weren't, if you couldn't play Eugene? And I... So I hadn't really thought about this. The one I identify with, I mean, I like I like Glenn. I mean, here's this guy that doesn't look like he should survive in the apocalypse just based on his background. Um, you get guys like Daryl, who's a, a tracker, um, hunting experience. He has an edge to him. You know, that, that works in the apocalypse. So you look at him and you go, yeah, okay, I buy that he would survive. You know, Glenn's a pizza delivery guy, and uh, he's had to grow into this leadership role over over the years. And 
I think that's kind of where who I would identify with most is, you know, I'm a guy that, you know, I'm just kind of a guy. I, you know, I like to do outdoorsy things, but I'm not a tracker. I'm not, you know, I, I don't own a gun. I don't shoot, you know, go out shooting and stuff like that. So I would be fairly ill-equipped if the apocalypse had actually happened, much like Glenn was. So I, I think I would probably identify with him the most. Great. And, you know, I'm sure there's some pizza delivery skills that would transition well into the zombie apocalypse. Well, I mean, if you can find some dough. <laughs> it's an easy recipe, finding your way around, maybe. How about, how about you? Like, what's your zombie apocalypse plan? Like, it happens tomorrow. What's the first thing you do? I find Norman Reedus, and I get right behind him. I mean, isn't that what we're all doing? <laughs> that guy, just day after day, surprises me with how much of a badass he is. I... You know, I don't know. It's starting to shift a little bit. I I thought that, you know, if I was in Los Angeles, I would want to just, you know, get on a boat and get to Catalina Island off, off the coast there and kill everybody there. And, <laughs> you know, uh, then, then just set up a lookout and just anybody that tries to get to the island, just take them out. I mean, but the more I talk about that, the more I realize more people are probably going to try and do that. So... Now my plan just involves getting to the liquor store at the end of my block. I'm sure they have a gun there. <laughs> Kill the owner, get the get the gun, and uh, steal a motorcycle nearby. I know which motorcycle it is. It's one of my neighbors, and uh, <laughs> I'm be upset. Hey, does he know that here. plan? Like, have you With explained that his motorcycle will become yours once the zombie yeah, apocalypse? Yeah, I don't know how to ride a bike. I mean, <laughs> I'll try, you know, and then and then just start shooting. I mean. You know, you know, take out as many people as I can, right? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? So, I, yeah, but headshots only. Like I, I, I watched the Fear of the Walking Dead, and I, I feel like they hadn't quite got the headshot memo yet because they're just wasting all their bullets on uh, on body shots. It's not going to do anything. Well, that's the beautiful thing about that show is you know us as the viewers know so much more than the characters do. So it, it it's exciting to watch someone figure it out. And yeah. It's, it's nerve wracking to, to go, no, oh, you're wasting your bullets. And, and they don't realize, you know, they don't know what's going on because yeah. zombies don't exist. You know, George Romero doesn't exist in this world. So they don't know what a zombie is. Right. They don't know what, you know, Night of the Living Dead is and, and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it gets, it's, I think it's frustrating for the viewers, but also exciting to know more than the characters at this point to watch them along their journey. All right. Let let me bounce my zombie apocalypse plan off you quick. I want you to pick it apart if it's if it's a bad one. Okay. It hits taking the family and I'm heading north. Cold weather, like getting up into Alaska. Low population. It's frozen like 80% of the year, so the zombies are just lawn ornaments if they're up there. And mm -hmm. you know, you can go around and put bolts in the heads of each one of them while it's cold, then you're just good to go. I think the warmth and the food is probably going to be the hard part. But I think we could work around it with less zombies. Well, yeah, I mean, there is that, but, it, you know, it's not... Uh, the thing that we realize as we're kind of expanding this Walking Dead world is, is you know, the zombies are, are not the biggest threat. You know, it's, it's the other humans, it's the elements, you know? I think, like you said, you know, staying warm is going to be key. Finding food, like, how are you going to be able to grow anything if everything's frozen? I mean, you have to... You have to work like ants, so you can uh, so you can survive the winter. Um, I think going north is a good good thing, but I wouldn't go as far north as Alaska. Maybe you know, maybe Calgary is probably okay. good enough. <laughs> yeah, it, it, Canadian zombies are more friendly, anyways. Like... Canadian zombies are extremely friendly. Are you kidding? <laughs> they they apologize a lot to you. They drink Pepsi. Uh, <laughs> How are you liking this season so far? Our Canadian neighbors. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I'm wearing a Canadian passport right here, so that's, you know. So we'd have you with us to get across the border. What, yeah. what, what, what are your thoughts on the season so far and where it's going? You know, it's, uh, it's a great season. You know, I still look at it as a fan because I was a big fan before I started working on the show. And it feels like every episode could be a season finale this, this season. Um, we really just put a cinder block on the gas pedal and it's just full steam ahead and you know, I love last week's episode with, with Carol going on a rampage. Um, it, it's like, it's one of those episodes that starts out and you're like, oh, okay, this is going to be one of those episodes where we just get to know the characters or whatever. And then just all hell breaks loose. Sure. And it was complete mayhem. And to watch someone like Carol, who we love to see, you know, being a badass. Um, 
That's, the fans love that. And so we're able to find great ways for that to happen. And, um, you know, it's it's an exciting direction that the show is headed. I mean, we, we have this herd of walkers heading towards Alexandria. Even though they shut the, the horn off, um, I'm sure that might come up <laughs> in a future episode. Um, and, uh, and we got this great struggle between uh, Morgan and Carol. I mean, people are, are picking sides as to, to, you know, who's in the right. I mean... Morgan is, is a peaceful man. He doesn't want to kill. And Carol's like, take no prisoners. Like, we're, everybody's dying. And uh, and that's just right for good conflict. And so, I, I you know, I can't wait for the fans to see the rest of the season, what we have planned. And, uh, you know, it's it's awesome. It's just going to get better. Great. So, which episode of the season, this is a, a couple part question. Which episode of the season are you looking forward to the most? Exactly what happens in it and who dies? <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, episode three where uh, Eugene kills everybody <laughs> and, um, and then he just babysits Judith for the rest of the season. Awesome. I can't wait for Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Another, another off the wall question. Uh, Alexandria passes a new law with, for grooming standards and Eugene either has to cut the mullet or go. What does he pick? doesn't he he leaves i think he i mean number one like what, what kind of what kind of community are we living in that we have we have grooming standards in the apocalypse i mean yeah i know jesse is a hairdresser i get that but i mean she she started stabbing uh one of the wolves in the chest with scissors you know her shears um i think if she comes anywhere near eugene's mullet she's gonna get a taste of her own medicine uh, <laughs> eugene will uh Will not go for that. Um, you know, he's got a great, he's got a great head of hair. Uh, I, I just do not see that happening at all. If it, if it were to happen, I, I, I would bet Eugene would, uh, would leave the community and go live on his own and, and eat as many turtles as he can. So, did you read the com- Do you read the comics? Are you caught up, or do you kind of not want to know? Um, it's a little bit of everything. I, I started reading the comics when I got cast. Um, you know, I knew it was a comic. And, um, and I had friends who read it and they, they loved it. This was my favorite show before I started and I didn't want to mix the two, Sure. but I figured if I'm going to work on it, it would be nice to kind of have as much knowledge about the entire Walking Dead universe mm-hmm. as possible. So I started to read it, but then I started to notice different elements, things that were different on the show that were different in the comics and vice versa. And I also just kind of didn't want to know what was you know, specifically going to happen. So I read up through about, you know, the issues know, around 110 or so, and um, then I put it down. Now, I'm very aware of what happens after that because the, the fans are, are the first to tell me, you know, oh, Eugene did this, or did you see what happened? This is what happened, you know, um, which is great. But, um, you know, I don't actively read them anymore. Cool. You're, you're an RPG fan, I saw on Reddit, you gamer. Yeah, I mean, well, here's the thing with uh, with games. I I can't. I, I'm not. I, I I don't allow myself to play them because I get. I have a very addictive personality. Um, you know, I battle that on a, a daily basis, and and I know it kind of sounds funny to be addicted to video games, but that's one thing that I get addicted to. Um, anything that kind of gives me that rush and that that high of and the excitement, I have to limit that in my life. Otherwise, uh, I'll disappear. Uh, so whether it's uh, whether it's you know something really bad uh, that I can get addicted to, or something lighthearted like video games, I, I just try to manage that as much as possible. Just because you know I, I want to go on living. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I have friends who are honestly afraid of Fallout Four coming out because they think it's going to like end their marriages. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I mean, Halo was huge for me. And um, I have a friend who just got an Xbox and was like, hey, do you want to come over and play Halo? And I I was literally on my way over to their house, and I had to turn around and go home. (laughs) What am I doing? Because this is going to be bad. It's going to just, it's it's pulling the thread on a a very delicate shirt and then just having the whole thing just come undone. That's, That's what I feel like would happen. So it's, um... 
I know it's kind of, it kind of seems lighthearted, but it's actually a deeper issue with me than, uh, than just, oh, I can't play it because I, I love it too much. Like, I, I, it's a problem. Uh-huh. All right. Well, it took a serious turn, so I want to talk about a serious scene. <laughs> so in okay. season five, you're, you're seen with uh, Michael Cutlets, the when he finds out that you've been lying the whole time or Eugene's been lying the whole time and yeah. uh, beats the living tar out of you. That was a... Uh, that was quite an intense scene, and I, I I think it's one of the better scenes of the show thus far. I wanted to kind of get your input on how you prepped for that and what it was like to film it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it was um, it was a fun scene to shoot. It was um, the the great thing about this show is is we all trust each other. We all have each other's back. We um, we offer up input. You know, we're not like telling each other what to do, but you know, we say. We say things like, hey, try it like this, or we give little tidbits about our character that might help another person's performance. Um, because we don't, you know, all the information isn't necessarily there for people. It's it's secretive when we talk to the fans and when we do interviews like this, but it's also just a secretive with each other. Um, nobody knew I, I didn't have the cure. A couple people had kind of figured it out, but it came as a surprise to a lot of the cast when... Um, when we figured out that, that Eugene didn't have the cure. So, you know, that's always fun. And, and you know, this whole show, not just that scene, but that whole show, we're, we're just really supportive of each other and helping each other out. Um, it was a very physically demanding scene to shoot. You know, we shot it over a couple days, which, um, you know, we always have several cameras rolling. And so even a big scene may not take it you know, more than a day, but this took two days. It was, it was really huge. And, um, you know, I'd never done any sort of stunt work where I'd had to take a punch or do anything like that. But again, you know, we trust each other. We, uh, go out of our way to, to support each other. We let each other, you know, stand on it, on our shoulders and, uh, you know, each other's shoulders and we lift each other up, you know? And so that's, yeah, it's kind of much, as much, uh, I don't know what to say. The, uh, you know, people say it's a great scene, you did a good job, but I just have to give all my credit to the crew and the, the other cast members that were in the scene with me, because without them, the, the you know, wouldn't be anywhere near what it could have been. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was fun. And and Michael Cudlitz, you know, is amazing. He's He's been in those situations before. Um, we, we prepped it, we ran through it a bunch. We... Uh, you know, there was never a moment where I felt unsafe or anything, and I, I still had to, you know, take the punch and then slam my, you know, which is obviously not a real punch, but um, then s- actually slam my head into the back of the fire truck. We had to do that about ten times, and that hurt, and I got a, a searing headache <laughs> that day from doing that before uh, Eugene fell on the pavement. Um, but you know, it was fun. We we sold the crap out of it, and I, I think the the fans loved it. Yeah, yeah, I think it was it was. At the highlight of the season and of the series itself. Well, hey, we're about out of time. Um, anything else? Anything else you got coming up? You want to let a, let our viewers know about? Well, you know, we're just talking Walking Dead. I mean, uh, I'm just so excited for the the rest of the season to air for everyone to see it. I'm really proud of it, and um, you know, it's the best season yet. It just keeps getting better. Oh, I, yeah, I can't wait to watch it, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be keeping up with you. So yeah, thanks for your time, and uh, Thanks, John. It, it was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Talk to you later. Bye.